I'm not going up there to watch the ball. I'm planning to go up there and play. I'll go ahead and piggyback it into this. I have no doubt that when spring football rolls around, he will be the most prepared kid on that field. Welcome, everybody, to the Coaches in the Mouth pod. This is Coach Jeff Williams, along with Coach Bray Cook and the Mouth Brent Bender. Got a great show for us today. You know, signing day just happened uh, mm-hmm. this Wednesday, and uh, got a, a, a future hog coming on here, Kobe Brandon yeah. from Fort Smith Southside, along with his offensive line coach, Coach Tad Stewart, a very respected line coach in the state of Arkansas. Uh Mouth, what you 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 followed this guy a little bit over there at Southside? Watched him live a few times. Talk to Cameron. Talk to me. What what do you want to hear from Kobe? And what have you seen from him? What have I seen I, from that young man? I've seen a very very physical human being <laughs> on the football field. I mean, he takes he takes care of business. Uh, Coach Stewart has done a gr- has done a great job with him from. 10th from 10th grade to, to 12th and uh Kobe's ready for I believe he's ready for, for college football this the strength part of it well he will be ready for that well and that's one thing we want to get into Bray what do you what do you want to hear from coach Stewart and his development and, and Kobe yeah you know it's, it's cool to have a, a special alignment come through your program like that and obviously with the success that they've had uh recently um Hopefully, you bring a little bit of that to, to Fayetteville. And um, really interested to talk to him about, you know, graduating early uh, as, as an offensive lineman, something that I went through. Um, to me, the key is the weight room. And so, interested to talk to him about that and what he's expecting in January. Well, let's get that before we get, get, get mm-hmm. him on here. What was your experience like, you know, graduating early? I know you, yeah. you're excited, but you, you got, you're got you still a kid. And you're, you know, they're having prom and they're doing mm-hmm. things over there. Talk to us a little bit about your experience in that. Yeah, you know, that's I actually had a kid ask me recently if, if it's something that he should consider. And for me, uh, it's awesome. You know, it's great because that, that spring semester, your senior year, um, not a whole lot of great things go on. I mean, you got a lot of time, you're down, you can either work, you can work out. Um, so you might as well, if you can, in my opinion, jump into the next phase of life, which is um, obviously for him, it's, it's the weight room getting ready to, to compete for a starting spot. Um, but it's easier to do when you're in my situation and Kobe's situation where you live nearby to Fayetteville. Yeah. Cause you know, there's weekends where, uh, it's important for, to, to be able to pop home for 30 minutes, you know, as a young old lineman, a young kid in college, um, and for him to go to Fort Smith is, is perfect. Um, so in his situation, I say, absolutely go ahead, do it. Um, all that time, that entire semester is just extra uh, time with meeting rooms, weight room, nutrition, getting the, the hang of the, um, the, the, the classes, the classwork you got to adjust to. So, um, I think it's awesome. Well, let's, let's not waste any more time with it. Let's see what he has to say about mm-hmm. it. Let's go ahead and bring him on our BSN guest this week, uh, university of Arkansas football signee, Kobe Branham from Fort Smith Southside and offensive line coach from Fort Smith Southside, coach Tad Stewart. Kobe, man, congratulations. You talk to us about today, big day signing, and probably a lot of family and friends. Tell me about the excitement and everything around. Tell me about your day so far. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, it's been a great day. I'm kind of glad everything's wrapped up. Get to start uh, working, working out and stuff, get up there, get a move on things, you know? Yeah, no, uh, there's no doubt about that and all that. Talk to us a little bit because we, we were talking before we came on air here with you know, like Coach Cook here, who you know went through the same process you did, and and a lot of us, Coach Stewart, myself, played college football back in the day. It was made a couple of visits, you picked the school, and that's where you went, and it was over. Talk to me now about this process with, and you were recruited, you know, by Ole Miss, a lot of different guys, and and you came yes, to sir. the decision to University of Arkansas. Talk to us about that process, and we don't get much in your business about NIL and and just the whole process, how it's been this year? Uh, it's pretty crazy. You know, you get that first offer, then they all start rolling in. And uh, you take these visits to places, and, I mean, 
everywhere has nice, nice facilities, nice, uh, nice schools, nice education. But uh, there's some schools that stick out, like uh, like Ole Miss and Arkansas schools like that. They stick out more than others, and you know that's kind of how I chose Arkansas, just because I like it so much more up there than other places. Well, as close to home, you're an hour away, and a lot of you know, Coach Stewart. We'll get him off the couch on Saturday and get him up here watching you uh, this year, and, and and you know, it's easy for your family to get back and forth. Talk to us yes, about sir. this about your recruiting process. You, a lot of changes happened. Why you know? This year, especially on the offensive side of the ball and your position, talk to us about you know Coach Kennedy leaving and Coach Mateo's coming in. We had him on the show, mm-hmm. great guy. Coach Coach Cooks worked with him. Talk to us a little bit your relationship just recently with Coach Mateos and your thoughts about him. Uh, Coach Mateos, he's a good guy. I think he's a real down to earth kind of guy. He's uh he's easy to talk to. He's easy to relate. He's relatable. He's he played college football too, so it's a uh, Real easy to talk to him. Um, you know, Coach Kenny leaving was it was tough just because I made such a good relationship with him. But you know, I think it was it was best for the team, best for him to get the. You know, he was kind of getting beat down on by fans and stuff, and it's it's probably wasn't the best for him to stay. And I think him going to Mississippi State is his best option. And then Coach Mateo's coming in. I think he's going to change the offensive line room. You know, get their confidence up because their their uh, confidence is pretty low right now after last season. Uh, no doubt, and then you get the addition later on, or uh, you know, Bobby Petrino, which you know you were probably a small kid when he was last time he was the head coach at Arkansas. Yeah, but you, you I mean you followed him obviously and know the history. What was your thought process when you heard Coach Petrino coming in as offense coordinator? Uh, I loved it. You know, he was the first person to offer me when he was at Texas A and M. So uh, to get back with him for as his my coach, that, I mean, it's great. He's I think he's a great coach. He's gonna really turn the offense around. No doubt. Well, Coach Murray, what you got for me? You guys are real yeah. similar. I mean, yeah, I know. The whole process here. I'm flat. I mean, I, I, uh, I graduated from my high school early, uh, a 7A West school up a little north of the, the old Harbor Wildcats, which y'all uh, uh, <laughs> got after pretty pretty well the last couple of years. Um, but uh, I graduated early um, to go play for Coach Petrino, kind of like, you know, what you're doing now. Uh, but for the, yes, people, the people listening, um, what does it take and what did you have to do uh, credit wise and with your high school uh, in order to graduate early um you know graduating early is not the the hardest thing you just got to take a little bit of extra classes take up college classes but other than that i mean it's it's pretty simple was it just uh, how many classes did you have to take uh this year i only took four classes i took two college classes to make it to make it uh to have enough credits to graduate yeah and so you're able to catch that up pretty quickly and and when do you actually report uh, to Fayetteville? Uh, January 12th. 12th, but then it's go time, right? Oh, yeah. I start practice on the 15th. That's awesome. That's good. Well, the, the ability to go in there, you know, a, a new coach and Coach Mateos, a uh, new offensive coordinator, uh, for you to get that jump and start in January, I think is just is huge. Um, what yes, are sir. some of the things that you're looking forward to? Uh, you know, graduating early, you basically get a, a semester – extra you know you get uh you get to go through all the li- weightlifting stuff like that for before all the other summer kids get in there and then uh you get to start classes early so you'll graduate early i think it's a big jump to graduate early for sure no it is um well obviously you know we're excited for you we're behind you um you're gonna have an exciting career uh, up in Fayetteville, and we wish you all the best thank you sir yeah no doubt we're gonna we're gonna switch it over here a little bit coach stewart coach stewart you know, you've got a – your track record's great. You've been an offensive line coach probably over 25 years, one of the most respected offensive line coaches in the state of Arkansas. When you first saw Kobe rolling around over there at Ramsey Junior High, what what was your thoughts? I mean, because, uh, you know, man, we were talking beforehand about, you know, you coached against Bray and you've always wished you'd had one, you know, big guy like Bray. You've got yeah. one. And, and talk to me – talk to me about that process with Kobe – when you first got him and where he's at now, you know the, the biggest thing about Kobe when we first when I first saw him over at Ramsey, he wasn't nowhere near the size he was now. He really blossomed in between his sophomore and junior year, and that's when I first realized that you know, God had blessed him with one thing that you can't control, and that's size. I mean, he just blew up in size, and I knew right then and there that you know based on everything else I'd seen about him or from working with him, we had something special. We had something really special in the works with him. Well, uh, talk to me about this, and this is kind of a two-part question, a little bit for both of you. I'll let Coach Stewart answer and come back to you, Kobe. 
you know, you, you played guard, he played guard this year and the capabilities, you know, we always talk about being a multiple player, you know, playing center, maybe <laughs> pushing out to play and tackle Kobe. I'm going to hit you first. What's your experience there? I know coach Stewart, how he works. He put place people in other positions. Uh, have you made yourself more valuable in learning those different positions? Because tackles a lot different guard and guards, a lot different center. Talk to me a little bit about that process. Uh, well, sophomore year, I started off tackle, you know, tackles. Yeah. A lot different than center and guard. It's, I think it's a tougher position, but you know, I think if I was to play tackle my senior year, I would have done a lot better than I did my sophomore year for sure. I think I improved a lot. I learned a lot. But um, center guard, I think I think I'm a great guard. I think that's mostly what I'll be playing in college. But, you know, Coach Mateo said center is also uh, in the talks as well because I have I snapped the ball all my junior high years. So I have the experience to do that as well. Well, Coach Stewart, go into, you know, because I've worked with you, obviously, how you get those guys in the process – and you've always done a pretty good job of guys that they were going to college projecting where they're going to play. You know, you're always going to do what's benefit for the team first, but getting those guys in the right position. Talk to us, talk to me a little bit about those multiple positions that he can play and how you develop that. Yeah. You know, the biggest thing about Kobe, when he actually grew into his body and he started to fill it out, I realized very quick uh, that, you know, him playing out on an island tackle, sure he could do it, but he could be absolutely devastating at a guard or center where he gets a double with a three or gallop down on the nose or block back on a shade. He was so strong and so wide, guys, that I knew I think it'd be I think it'd be a better use of his tools to play a interior. I thought he was an interior guy all the way once he grew into his body. Well, and he obviously has done that, and I've got to watch him play live a couple of times and, and been outstanding. Talk to me about this, Kobe. Going into it, and you're a young guy. They we've had Arkansas's had a little struggle in the offensive line. They, you know, obviously brought some portal guys in and still got guys there. Where do you see you fitting in that mix? It's early. You don't know. You haven't been out there. And then, Coach Stewart, where do you see him fitting in the mix? Go ahead, Kobe. Uh, well, I'm not going up there to watch football. I'm I'm planning going up there and playing. So, I mean, I'm gonna do it whatever it takes to get that starting position. But um, the guys they brought in, I, I, they're great football players, but I'm I'm still going to compete with them. Coach Stewart, where do you see it fitting in the mix? Yeah, well, I'm going to answer it to you like this. I'm going to tell you guys what I told every single coach, and there were a bunch of them that came in and sat down and we started talking about Kobe. And it had less to do about what you see on film because that's the easy stuff. Here's the thing about Kobe, and I'm going to use what's going to happen January 12th, for example, and I'm going to use all three of us. You know, guys, let's just get it out there. Now, Bray, I can't speak to you 100%, but Coach Williams, I play with you. You know, sometimes in February and in March, and you're in there with those weights and you're running, you're doing bleachers. You're just not excited. You're not too excited about that, right? You just don't. It's just human nature. The kid you're talking to is a complete unicorn. He thrives in that. And when he tells you he's ready to get up there January 12th, the kid's probably not sleeping at night. He looks forward to going in and what's in the weight room that day. What are we doing plyometrics that day? He absolutely looks forward to it. And, guys, I'll go ahead and piggyback it into this. I have no doubt that when spring football rolls around, he will be the most prepared kid on that field. Because one thing that makes what I think Kobe very unique in my experience is that he loves the game, and he is constantly watching film, watching himself, and wanting to improve. I have the text messages to prove it. I mean, all the time, asking about hand placement here. It's my first step. Am I gaining too much ground? Should it be more lateral? You know, it's those little nuanced things. And for a kid that young to understand how important those little things are, it really, it, it, it's huge, guys. And, and that's why I think he has got a legit chance, man, to get up there and get himself ready to play next year. I believe that 100%. And everybody's playing a little early. And I want to piggyback off that just a little bit is, Kobe, what are you going into? We all got strength and weaknesses. What what's a part of the game that you're going into that you feel pretty confident in? And then what and everybody's got them. And then what's part of your game you think you got to get better at? Um, I think I'm really good at run blocking, you know. Uh that's my I love that. I love finishing people. I love taking them to the ground. And um 
I think my pass pro is really good. I've, I've really uh, broke it down and worked on it a lot over the uh, past couple of years. And then uh, some things I need to work on, I think I get quicker. That's, I think that's all there is to it. I think I need to pull faster, stuff like that. Coach Sturge, you watch him every day and watched him for the last four, three, four years here and then on film. What do you yeah. see the strengths and weaknesses? You know, I, he could always play with his hands tighter. I think that any offensive line coach in the world will never be satisfied with where your hands are. And I'll say the next, the second biggest one, pad level, pad level, pad level, you know, and he's gotten so much tremendously, much, so much better at it. Uh, but to me, you know, he's talking about his run block and his pass blocking game. And I think the biggest thing for Kobe is that he hadn't had a chance to line up, you know, very rarely, very like when you play too, you know, you didn't see an SEC three technique in the seven, a West. I mean, I don't recall that many when you were coming through and, you know, Kobe, I think that he is better suited to play against those guys. And he's got the confidence. I'm just telling you, I think he's going to show out when he gets up there. I really do. Well, that's awesome. Well, Coach Bray. Yeah. Well, you got what you got for him. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's I'm excited. One, I'm ready to go to the weight room, watch you get after it uh, in January, January 12th. Um, I think the biggest key, and, and, and Coach has talked about it, um, is you're right. You know, you – the, the level of competition does, you know, he takes a step up, obviously, you know, we all know that. Um, but for you to jump in early is a big advantage. Um, but the biggest key for a young offensive lineman, and it sounds like you're prepared to, to, to get after this, is the weight room. Um, because you, you have to uh, understand these guys that you're going to line up against have been doing it for several years uh, and have been in that weight room in that offseason. And that mindset that it sounds like you have, so do they. And so the, yeah. the biggest key that I'm excited to, to watch you develop over these next several years is, is in the weight room. Um, have you, have you experienced much of the strength program there or, or talked to those coaches about kind of what that plan looks like, uh, in January? Uh, not too much. I mean, I'm sure I'll learn more about it, uh, throughout the month, but, uh, I've, I've kind of seen how they've worked out and kind of, like, kind of what they do. I don't really have the plan for like when I get up there, but I've seen it. Yeah, that that's the biggest transition I think that you make going into college, especially in the SEC, is uh, yeah, the weight program is such a different level, and more than that, the nutrition and the sleep and all the things, the tools that they have that you're going to experience. Uh, I'm excited to watch you uh, get after it up in Fayetteville. Definitely be in some spring practices. Well, guys, hey man, appreciate you coming on. Hey, Kobe, we're going to be down in spring practice checking your work. I'll try to get in there a couple couple times and we'll be checking your work and we're always checking coach stewart's work on a daily basis <laughs> on the coaches in the mouth show every every day we're checking that guy's work guys hey kobe congratulations man you're excited you and your family and coach stewart i know how excited he is for for you guy for you and and we're gonna hey we're gonna be pulling for you and good luck to you yes sir thank you see you coach Hey, Jeff, I love what you and Bray there are doing. I'm a big fan of it. Keep it up, guys. Take care. See Thanks you, man. Through. See you guys. Great interview right there, boy. I tell you what, I bet Coach Mateos is very excited yeah. about getting mm -hmm. that young man. And, you know, with Coach Stewart being his coach really the last three years, and he's done a great job with offensive linemen. Bray, what did you get out and you got into the weight room a little bit with him and then coming in early? What, what do you see from – Talking to to Kobe, what do you see, and and what are you looking forward to his development? Well, the the best thing I think about that interview was you know Coach Tad talking about his mentality and you know how he he uh, he coaches himself. He was always asking questions, watching film, um, and he enjoys the off season because that is what it's about. You know the level that he's about to step into. Um, everybody is just as big as him, yeah. if not bigger, uh, and more experienced and, and maybe a little more explosive and stronger. So for him to jump in there and just have the mindset of, I want to get better and you have to do that every single day, then he'll be all right. And so that's what I'm, I appreciate it about, um, talking to him. Well, mouth, I mean, you follow Razorback football by as close as anybody I know, you know, they got some transfer portals we brought up. He he expects to come in and, you know, that's a great mindset to come in and play as a young offensive lineman. What's your thoughts and, and where Kobe fits? Well, let me let me say this. Uh, hats hats off to uh, Coach Stewart and Coach Dameron. Coach Stewart's uh, 
college, high school, he's he's on a he's on a par with any offensive line coach in the country. And uh, Kobe will be one thing he will be will be fundamentally sound when he when he steps on when he steps on the campus with his footwork, his hand placements, staying low. You know the little the little things that you might have to go over with some of your younger offensive linemen when they get to town. Uh, Kobe's already got that. And one one great thing that Coach Dameron and Coach Stewart did with Kobe at Southside is he always played guard. Yeah. Never tried never tried to move him out to tackle. Yeah, well, and, and we talked about that with Coach Stewart. I was you, you sit there and listen was. And he does a really good job of that with college. You know, a lot of high school coaches, a big guy, they're going to throw him out there and tackle automatically. And you got to do what's best for the team. But you, you just nailed it. Him playing that guard and, and Coach Stewart teaching him a little center, I mean, that's going to go take him a long ways. Yep. You know, because as a guard, Kobe's going to line up and he's going to fight you in a phone booth. You know, it's not that he doesn't have great feet because he does – but I mean to play on to play tackle at the Coach Cook, you know, to play tackle in the SEC, you've got to be a special human to do that. Snap in and snap out. You're living proof of that. You're a you were a special human. That, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, man, that was a great interview, Bray. Man, I tell you what, our our podcast is getting kind of hot here. It, lately, it's man. warming and, up. Uh, we're hot to the touch. So, I mean. Harding last week, you know, mm-hmm. with the national championship, or it's exploding up. Great yep. interview with Coach Simmons, and then this week with with Kobe and Coach Stewart. Talk to her fans. Uh, maybe got some gear things about to mm-hmm. pop out. I've, I've, people been asking me for t shirts and merch. things like this, some whole merchandise. Merch. And we're gonna get into that later on. Talk to us <laughs> about where they can find us, and especially with our YouTube. Yep, uh, YouTube's the big one. Uh, Coaches Pod or Coaches in the Mouth. Search either one of those, you'll find our podcast. Uh, the likes and the subscribes are, are what keeps this thing going. Um, we're also building a little bit of a, of a base on uh, on Twitter, on X, so we'll be able to post our shows on there as well. Um, coming soon, uh, tied to our YouTube page, is going to be our store for some merchandise, a little merch oh. coming out, Coach. Well, that's right about Christmas time. gear, yeah, right there, there yeah. Much. Stocking stuffers. Yeah, I'd get Coach Linda something for Christmas. Yes, right very, important. <laughs> very important. Very <laughs> important. Well, the last of the big spenders. Uh, that's what we yes. are, big spenders over here, coaches of the mouth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for Coach Jeff Williams, Coach Bray Cook, and the mouth Brent bender, we'll see you next time.